Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie and today we are continuing with our top common design mistakes for every room in your home. Today we are tackling the bedroom. I encourage you to watch this video from your bedroom so you can take a look around and see if you're making these common mistakes or if you're getting it right all along. Design is all about experimenting with the outcome and editing, styling, restyling until you're no longer inspired and ready for a refresh. Before we get started, I am so excited to announce that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you haven't heard of Skillshare, it is this amazing online learning community for creatives. They offer thousands of inspiring classes in every subject imaginable from art to photography to managing your productivity, cooking, business, writing, and yes, even interior design as well. These classes are taught by the world's leading practitioners with the primary goal of helping you learn through video lessons and then completing a project at the end, which I think is pretty cool. It's a different way of consuming content that is really hands-on. I mean, the classes are curated for learning, so the bonus is that there are no ads whatsoever. A lot of you have asked me if I knew of any interior design classes online, and Skillshare is an awesome resource. One of the most popular design classes right now is called How to Use Minimalist Interior Design to Live Your Best Life by Erica Fogelman. I am a maximalist by nature and I'm all about paring it down, especially with a little toddler running around. I would love to learn a little bit more about minimalism, so I cannot wait to dive right into this course. Most classes are under 60 minutes and some are even less than that. So you can watch at your own pace, on your own schedule, and it's really leisurely. The thing that I love about Skillshare is that it is a community of millions of like-minded creatives. So you can always get feedback for all of the classes that you've joined. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes and they are constantly adding new classes on the daily. Membership is typically less than $10 a month with a subscription, but Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 subscribers who click on my link in the description box below free trial of premium membership. There is no commitment. You get to explore your creativity and watch at your own leisure and pace. If you're feeling a bit stuck and uninspired right now, I advise you to click on the link and just look around and see if anything excites you. Get ready to learn new skills, explore creative arts, and discover your passions for a more inspiring life. So without further ado, let's jump right into the top 15 most common mistakes you're making in the bedroom. I started dabbling in interior design back in high school. One of my best friends, Jenny, was having her birthday and I thought the most creative, cool thing to do was to paint and redesign her entire bedroom and surprise her at the end. I knew that she loved blue tones and I picked this like crazy loud turquoise paint. We painted her entire four walls in this super saturated color and by the time we were done, it looked like Crayola had like spit up on her walls. It was, it was horrendous. It was horrible. Needless to say, she came home and she repainted the entire room over again in like a really calming white color. It was just not a good look. One of the most common mistakes that I see in the bedroom is too bold of a color. The bedroom should be a calming and relaxing place for you to retreat at night. It's a place for you to relax and recharge, so think about the colors that inspires that type of mood. For a more soothing environment, stick to lighter and softer shades. For a moodier environment, go for something deep, dark, and saturated, maybe like a charcoal or even black. Make sure that you have light contrasting furniture so the entire space doesn't feel like a dungeon. Think restful, peaceful, relaxing, and however you use color to interpret that. But if you love a burst of bright color, use it sparingly in your accents and decor. Another common mistake is the wrong bed placement. Whether or not you follow feng shui principles, bed placement is very crucial to a good night's sleep. The idea is that the bed should always be in a command position, which means when you open the entry door, you can see who's coming in. If your bed is placed on the wall that shares the entry door, it could get very noisy since most likely it's right next to a hallway. Or if your bed is placed on a wall that's backed up to a noisy room, it could also disrupt your sleep. You want to pick a wall with the least amount of sound and that's usually the one that's opposite the door. Another common design mistake I see in the bedroom is too small of a rug or no rug at all. If you have a hard surface flooring, you could really benefit from something soft and cozy underfoot. 
Make sure that the rug extends past your bed at least 18 inches on both sides. This will ensure that you're landing on the soft rug every morning instead of the cold hard floor. I've been getting some questions asking if runners are okay. If that's the case, you could place runners on both sides of the bed for symmetry and balance. The bed is too big for your room. How do you know if the bed is too big for your room? Well, you might not have room for nightstands on each side, and you definitely don't have room to walk all the way around the bed. What you end up with is a lack of walkway and very little storage space. You know that scale and proportion is imperative to a great interior design. You want the bedroom to feel light and airy and never too cramped with a large bed, especially in an already too small space. The ideal walkway is between 30 and 36 inches on either side of your bed. You can fix this mistake with a smaller size bed or you can change the orientation of your headboard so that it lays on a longer wall with more ample room for you to walk around. Another common mistake is the wrong size bedside tables. Scale and proportion can make or break a room. Too tall and you're reaching up, too low and you're reaching down. These awkward movements make it worse when you have daily essentials that you need to get to. Whether or not you're turning on a table lamp or you're trying to reach a glass of water, the optimum height for bedside tables is usually right around mattress height or even a little bit above it. Personally, I like my bedside tables just a little bit taller than the mattress, but no more than three inches. Another common design mistake for bedrooms is too much furniture. Start with the necessities bed, bedside tables, and maybe a dresser for additional storage. Beyond that, you need the clearance to walk around your furniture with ease, and you need to be able to pull out your drawers and cabinets with nothing obstructing it. Now see if there's any room left over for an end of the bed bench, a seating group, a mirror if you need it, or even a vanity. If you don't have that room, reduce the amount of furniture you have in the space. The goal is to keep your furniture minimal, but meaningful. Another common design mistake I see is too much clutter. If the energy in your bedroom feels off, it usually is. My first suggestion is always to purge. Remove the things that no longer inspire you to make room for the things that do. Remove all of the decor off of your surfaces, the pile of clothes in the corner of your room, and definitely those 20 tiny pillows that are littering your bed. You definitely do not need them. The fix is to keep only what you need daily. Vitamins in a box, a remote control in your drawers, and journals and books on a tray to keep it tidy and organized. Have a place for everything and designate a drop-off spot, like a single chair in your room that you can throw things on when you're in a hurry. The wrong sized headboard. A short mattress and a tall headboard can leave a gap where all your pillows can fall through. On the flip side, a tall mattress and a short headboard has you resting your head against a bare wall, and that is just not comfortable. Either adjust the height of the box spring or invest in a taller headboard. Your layout blocks natural light. If you have no other choice but to put your bed underneath a window, you're blocking natural light. The fix is to swap out your headboard for a lower profile headboard so you let more of that beautiful natural daylight in. Or you could also go for a lower profile platform bed that sits a little bit lower to the ground. I always love to add sheer panels as the first layer of defense on my windows to let more of that beautiful natural light through. You could also add table lamps and strategic layers of lighting like wall sconces if you lack natural light. Ill-fitting window treatments are none at all. Remember, function first. The typical needs of most bedrooms are privacy. You might need to block out that morning light or block the views at night, especially if you're at street level. But everyone's personal needs differ, so figure out how you sleep and how you like to wake up and look for window treatments that function exactly for your needs. I always like to install shears and then blackout panels for my clients so they have complete control over the layers of light and privacy. But in my bedroom, I only have one layer of curtains. They're blackout panels. I always draw my windows open in the morning so I get this lush, natural view of my courtyard and landscaping. Another design mistake I see is not enough light or the wrong color of light. Proper lighting is practical as well as aesthetically pleasing. Too low light can make the bedroom look dark and dim, especially at night. Two cool light bulbs can make the room feel really institutional, like an office or a hospital. Always opt for bedside table lamps for a little bit of ambiance. You can also install wall sconces for task lighting and reading at night. Absolutely avoid fluorescent lights at all costs. They strain your eyes and are not conducive to a restful night's sleep. 
My favorite color of light is soft white LED light bulbs. It has a tint of warmth in there and it's not too yellow and it looks really great with candlelight. A really easy fix for your lighting is to place everything on dimmers so you have complete control over the layers of lighting in your room. Don't forget those light fixtures. It's a great way to add decorative flair and personality to your room. Another common mistake I see is not enough texture. The bed only has a sheet and a thin blanket. You don't have an area rug underfoot. You have plastic blinds hanging in the windows. It does not feel cozy at all. That can lead to a look that's cold, sterile, and uninviting. The fix is to add different textures and fabrics to your bedroom. You can do this with your bedding, your rugs, your pillows, throw blankets, window treatments, and even wall covering to soften up the look and the feel of the space. Another common mistake I see, and probably one of my biggest designer pet peeves, is your furniture is too matchy-matchy. It's a very old school, traditional, dated look to have a bedroom set with all coordinating pieces. You know the one I'm talking about. It's a one where you flip to page 12 in your catalog and there's your bedroom right there. Matching bed, matching nightstands, matching dresser, maybe there's a vanity mirror on the dresser. I mean, everything just looks the same. What this tells me is that you didn't try to put any thought and consideration into the interior design of your space. I think the only thing that should match in your bedroom is the nightstands. The rest should be separate pieces that feels like it's been curated over time. The fix is to break it up. If you currently have a matching set in your bedroom now, leave the bed or the nightstands. Move the dresser to another room, definitely remove that vanity mirror, and look for pieces that can show a little bit more of your personality. And finally, your bed is on the ground. It's on the ground with no box spring. It can harbor dirt, dust, allergens, and potentially mold because the mattress cannot breathe. That's why a box spring and even a frame is very essential to your bedroom. Even low beds, almost to the ground, is tough on joints. Tall beds look grander, more upscale, and elevated, especially for a room that you spend one third of your life in. Remember that when it comes to designing a bedroom that is beautiful, peaceful, relaxing, and elegant, function first. Beds, nightstands, dressers. Furnishing should be minimal, but meaningful. Your bedroom should be a place that you look forward to retreating to every night. Take the time to look for pieces that reflect your personality. Then add in some accessories, artwork, personal photography, mementos that feel authentic to who you are and share your story. As a bonus to today's video, I'll be linking my favorite bed sheets in the description box below. No, I have not tried every bed sheet out there. Of course, that is really impossible. This list is collected from the bed sheets that I've previously owned and loved, the ones that I purchased for my clients time and time again, and ones that have been referred to me by my designer friends in the industry. If you like this type of content and you're enjoying this Common Design Mistakes series, please give this video a thumbs up. Are you currently making any of these bedroom design mistakes? If you are, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to help you fix them. Coming up next, mistakes that you're making in the living room. Please comment below and let me know what other rooms you wanna see common design mistakes for. And be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. The first 1,000 to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.